So where did all this mess come from? I don't know. <laughs> but this is uh, a speculative mechanism that I, I developed and put forward in my thesis. Um, what the uh, geological information tells us for the very early Archean era was that uh, certainly mantle temperatures were around about 1,500 degrees hotter than what they are now, and surface temperatures were between 30 and 300 degrees hotter than what uh, they are now. Um, <coughs> I'll just um, briefly mention uh, something about geological time uh, uh, before we go on a little bit further. Uh, geological time, uh, to, 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 to measure geological time, you, uh, there's certain minerals that you can assay and, and determine the, they, they decay, they're, they're, uh, they're decay products, they're daughter elements. You can measure the, the ratios of these and you can then convert that to time. You know the decay rate of these various minerals and there's a whole swag of, suite of, of minerals that you can use. And <coughs> these, these methods are very, very sophisticated these days. Um, I work at um, uh, Telfer in, in the central north uh, West Australia at the moment, where our rocks, we have granites, they're dated at 604 million years old, plus or minus one to two million years. And this is very, very accurate, compared with um, 10, 15 years ago, where that would be 600 plus or minus 20 or 30 million years. So it's becoming very, very sophisticated and very accurate these days, what I digress. Uh, so what I was alluding to is, you can only measure uh, the age of a rock once that the crystals in that rock have uh, solidified and that rock has, has um, uh, cooled enough to be preserved with time. So at that moment in time when that first rock solidified and was preserved and preserved up to the present day, and you then go and measure that, uh, take measurements from that, uh, prior to that time, if that rock was molten, you cannot measure time. So basically our geological time starts at that moment when that first rock crystallised and solidified and preserved to the present day. So these high mantle temperatures and surface temperatures then um, suggested to me that in the, during the pre-Archean, uh, prior to four and a half thousand million years ago, from the indeterminate period of time, that the Earth was actually molten. And what I've shown here in this um, first one is um, a slightly larger Earth, an Earth plus Moon um, incandescent blob. And um, what I, what I uh, intimated in my research was that the, the Earth, this primitive Earth-Moon blob, was very much closer to the primitive young Sun, very much smaller than what it is now and totally different to what it is now. So if you can imagine uh, a fragment, or, or not a fragment, a, a blob of uh, material flung off the surface of this primitive young sun, very similar to the um, sunspot activity that we see today um, uh, on a yearly basis and happening on the sun today, but different materials. So, so what I'm suggesting is that we have this, um, this Whatever the, the sun is made of, this, this blob of pure energy, whatever, plasma, whatever, that's flung off this surface of this, this sun, that, that blob, as well as periodically the rest of the remaining planets are also, also the same. Uh, this material, uh, this, this primitive planet, along with the other planets, then gradually, over a ex very extended period of time, uh, move away from uh, the surface of the sun, away from the influence of that uh, high temperatures on the sun, this material, this, this energy then simply condenses to form matter. Uh, this is simply a reversal as our next speaker I think will, will allude to. Um, this e energy uh, and Einstein's equation, if you increase the speed of matter you convert it to energy. If you decrease the speed of energy you condense it to form energy. It's just simply a reversal of Einstein's equation. Uh, energy has no mass, or well, matter has mass. So at that moment in time, once that energy condenses to form matter, you then start to get mass. Um, during this same phase, I envisage, envisage this newly formed material uh, condensed on the uh, this very primitive uh, blob of sun material. Uh, 
becoming gravitationally unstable, or generating a wobble. Um, I calculated that if you, you can, if you had, you need 400 kilometer thickness, which is about that scale of material of this new molten matter, to be stripped off that primitive Earth-Moon um, blob to form a binary Earth-Moon planet, which is what we are now—a binary planet. The size of the moon and the size of the primitive Earth were roughly identical uh, dimensions at that time, 1,700 kilometres radius, 3,400 kilometres diameter. We'll forget about the moon now. That moon comprised matter which had already been condensed. So the radius of the moon essentially stayed constant from then on. Um, the, the Earth was still retained this highly reactive core material. I then envisaged this condensation of matter to continue to condense at the core mantle interface. New material will then form, uh, forming the mantle. New material will then cause mantle swell. Mantle swell will then be transferred to the, continent, to the outer crust and cause crustal extension. By the time we get to the, to the Permian period, we then, start, we, we then reach a point where this newly formed continental crust the, the ability to extend is exceeded and we start getting fragmentation and break up of this crust and um, opening up the modern oceans and this is a, a cross section of the, the, the modern earth where we have mid-ocean rift zones, volcanic material being derived uh, upwelling from the mantle being extruded along these cracks and being solidified um, on the sea, uh, the, at the ocean floor. The continental the fragments of the continental crust remain uh, in position with deep roots. Um, this is a, again a contentious issue in plate tectonics. We have the continents have very deep roots. We're in plate tectonics. Uh, this material is supposedly subducted in this very region where we have these deep roots, very very deep, hundreds of kilometres deep roots below our, our continents. So that's in a nutshell.